Yay! Right. Hello. 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 I'm Sam. I'm Jack. And uh, we we talk politics, or we talk good politics. That's as, as Jack that'll, saying that'll just say now. Somewhere. Good politics yes. or bad politics, depending. Depending. That was my joke, but Jack's still in it for some reason. Right. Um, <laughs> and it's the, today is the evening of the thirteenth of March. Is it the thirteenth of March? Yes. I feel like I keep track of this. It's days, Monday. It's Monday, the thirteenth of March. In fact. Um, and um, we we were we were so we planned to do our first video today, and we were going to talk about the Labour Party because we talk about the Labour Party almost every time we see each other. It seems sometimes because something dramatic has always happened, as it has in the last week. But um, we're not going to talk about that. Well, we may touch on it a bit, but it'll come up. Yes, we're actually going to talk about what what's happened today. Was that that Nicola Sturgeon, uh, Scottish First Minister, has dear uh, leader, say, uh, dear leader indeed, uh, has uh, well, your dear leader. Don't we? Well, basically, we're already creating not, divisions here no. that don't even exist. <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon has announced her intentions to uh, seek a second referendum on Scottish independence. Yes. And uh, you, can, you might be able to describe it in a more specific way. Um, mm. Do you want to describe it in a more specific way? No. No. Okay. Good. Non-specific is good. Like, I yeah. always think if you're non-specific, you can't be wrong. Whereas, like, if you're specific, then it's much easier. Oh, well, that's my philosophy. Nice. So I'm always vague as shit because um, that works. Um, yes. Oh, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you. You're gonna start. You, so we haven't talked about this yet. No, we haven't talked about this topic yet this evening since it came up. So I was gonna ask you, what is your, what was your initial reaction when you when you saw this news being announced? Um, and what was the kind of first things that made you think? Um, well, one, I was surprised. I'm going to mm -hmm. go through, like, emotions, like, <laughs> so um, surprised because, my voice has gone funny, there we go, surprised because I didn't think she'd do it now, I thought she'd wait, I, mm. in my, in my, in my head, I thought she'd put this off for a while longer until she could secure the majority that she wants over the, whatever mm. period of time she said for, um, for independence, there was that. And um, then when she actually... When you say... Can I just check what you mean there? When you say she should, can, she should secure the majority she wants, do you mean just kind of looking at opinion... That she's just going to be looking yeah. at opinion polling and waiting for the opinion polls to say... Yes, well, yeah. Saying yes. So previously she was saying that she wouldn't call a referendum unless there was a, a visible shift in the polls for a period mm. of six months or something. There was something a bit more defined. That is quite defined. Um... This, it seems like there was one poll last week yeah. that was a lovely looking graph that was literally just like 50-50. Yeah. There's a statistician somewhere that's yes, loving it. Yes, no. And Nicholas, I feel a bit like, <laughs> did Nicholas Sturgeon just go there and see that and be like, yes, we're going to do this now. Okay, that's, do my, that's my Nicholas Sturgeon impersonation. Yes, we're going to do this now. Um, no, well, I think she's done that. But then I also think maybe she heard the other thing that happened today, or was going to happen, not yes. today but tomorrow... That actually isn't going to happen now until because things don't happen next two weeks now. I don't know. The end, the end of March, March is the um, triggering of Article Fifty. So I think she wanted to get the jump on mm. on May. Yes. Okay. Um, dive in there. Um, it's so clear that their relationship hasn't been plain sailing, shall we say? No. They're they're both quite. Um, I don't know how to describe this. I suppose they're people used to getting what they want, I suppose, I think. Yeah. Both I didn't know where you were going with that. I thought we were going to become very close to... to <laughs> like middle-class men commenting on middle-class women. Not middle-class women. I don't even know what you meant. Um, no. They're used to getting what they want. I feel I like they like are... a legitimate they... political comment. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Um, but... No, I thought I was sort of surprised. They are also women, and I don't think that affects anything no. about anything. <laughs> it's done. good that they're women. Um, yeah, does it now feel like I'm, I'm not being sarcastic about it? <laughs> I'm not being in any sarcastic. Way. I'm... You're being so sarcastic. <laughs> it's like, got two women it's rather than a woman country, leader. And everything's terrible. Everything's great. I don't think that's their fault, to be fair. No, it isn't their fault. <laughs> um, actually, that's a legitimate fault. That's a legitimate point, rather, that... It's not their fault, and especially I saw someone commenting on this that Nick, this is very much something that has been brought upon Nicola Sturgeon. Yeah, her, that she has been um, confronted with a the referendum result that happened, um, and b um, kind of I think 
I get the impression she's been met with huge intransigence from Number 10 on any kind of um, negotiation about Scotland. I think just after the referendum, she thought she was going to be in a position to negotiate um, either some kind of special sweetheart deals for Scotland. Yeah. I don't think it would have been ever been possible to have some kind of special relationship between Scotland and the EU. I don't see how that would work administratively. No, but I'd have thought they'd, they'd push for something. Yeah, but I also think she thought she was going to be in a position to, to um, kind of ameliorate or, I don't know, um, push the UK government to have a closer relationship with the EU than closer than just being in the single market in the customs union. I yeah. don't think Nicola Sturgeon ever thought that, because I never thought that the UK government would push to leave the single market and leave the customs union, mostly because the Conservative Party committed itself to that in its manifesto, but hey... What's that word? But to be um, <laughs> you got to the punchline <laughs> before. <laughs> um, yeah. So there is that. Who's that? Um, uh, yes, I, I'm with you, by the way, when you said you were surprised about uh, Nicola Sturgeon's uh, announcement. I was as well by the timing of it. Um, so I think, yeah, because I think to some degree she was caught... Um, not oh, yeah. caught well she wasn't caught unawares but she's been forced into this position yeah. but she's been forced into it as the most politically expedient position i think mm. um someone uh, against i saw someone tweeted someone i'm not going to credit them it's credit credits involved research I'm not going to check we have a rule which is we don't do research we're allowed to live our lives <laughs> yeah. and find out information through our lives but we don't do research to, to I structured my thoughts on this morning on it's the, the previous topic. Jack structured his thought, which I consider cheating to structure your <laughs> thoughts. Um, the, I've lost my train of thought now. So I lose my train of thought. That's something you'll notice. Um, some, Do you want you me to know. pick up? Yes, pick up. Um, so one, I was surprised. Two, um, two, I had mixed feelings. Because... Um, so in the last referendum, yeah, I think I was very much in the middle, undecided for a long time, going back and forth. Yeah. This time, coming after Brexit, I'm a bit like, fuck it, let's go for it. Um, <laughs> that's partially a knee-jerk reaction, I think. Yeah. But then also, I like the EU was one of the issues that made me yeah. borderline last time. Um, and now that that card's off the table, I'm like, well, we. Me as well. If the yes. e if the UK can have lots of trading with Europe even after the EU, then why can't Scotland have lots of trading with England and Wales yes. even after independence? Um, so there is that, and there's all the sort of conflicted emotions about <laughs> Scottish independence. It's a really highly emotionally charged issue. Uh, <laughs> so what you were saying, what you're saying is you were very unsure at the time of the last referendum. And yeah, you're very and unsure now. But for yeah, different reasons. For different reasons. For the opposite reason, almost. Almost. Yes. Um, and then thirdly, I've sort of resigned myself to, to the fact, on the tube on the way here, um, <coughs> was that I'm choking on a pistachio. If they I die before the end of it. <laughs> um, and third, I was sort of resigned myself to the fact that whatever happens, this, this could be good for Scotland, mm. in the sense that either, point three A, um, Scotland becomes independent from a hard right totalitarian Brexit Britain where you know people march the streets and all sorts of things um, or the UK says okay we'll do Brexit but we're we're doing a, a more moderate sensible thought through version of Brexit that um, that Scotland can, can be on board with Yes. I am um, very much on, specifically on the topic of Scotland and independence, I'll put my cards on the table that at the time of the last referendum, I was, um, my broad feeling was in favour of Scottish independence. I'm not Scottish, I don't have any particular Scottish heritage, as you can probably tell from my accent. <laughs> um, but I um, did have a kind of yeah, so I didn't have a specific emotional connection to it, but I, I am quite broadly of the opinion that in the kind of international context, kind of democratic power should be held kind of at as, as a lower level as possible. And whether that's kind of... Groundbreaking opinion. <laughs> when, 
<laughs> for some yeah. people, it would be. For some people, it would be. And and in most, in the case of most countries, that's simply a federal system. Yeah. Uh, as in the case of the United States or Brazil or, or Germany. Um, and if you look at countries where power is held very centrally, countries like Russia, for example, or China, uh, those aren't, don't tend to be countries one wants to emulate. It's got so, so much knowledge, international knowledge there. <laughs> yes. China and Russia are nasty <laughs> countries. You heard it here first. Um, <laughs> Do you want to get on at the North Koreans next? <laughs> All that power North Yang Korea. Yang. I'm not going to mention North Korea because apparently, according to some people, mentioning North Korea is like mentioning the Nazis when it literally isn't mentioning the Nazis. But anyway. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I generally feel countries should have kind of power should be uh, federalized at a low level. And devolution is by definition not federalization because it, it, the power is literally, as the word suggests, devolved from the center. It's like the central government saying, here, lovely regions, you can have this power. Uh, whereas I think power should come up towards the top. So I'm generally in favour of independence for, uh, well, I'm generally in favour of just high level the autonomy. autonomy. But you've done a, poli a politics degree. Yeah, well, you did a law degree. It's not... No, I know, but that's like lots of political definitions and from the bottom. Oh, is it? No, oh, I'm, this is supposed to be simple language. It is simple. Okay. I'm just saying you, you said it out very simple. Clearly. Okay, good. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'll carry on then. Um, but, so specifically, where we are at the moment is obviously Britain faces a very uncertain future outside of the EU. Very the world is becoming a, um, a, 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 a place, or the Western world is becoming a place in which kind of divisions are created and kind of people are kind of set against each other. Um, and especially so for kind of both economic reasons and for more kind of political social reasons, I think the idea of having like another huge change to Britain over the coming years, where Scotland becomes independent, we have to start thinking about um, the relationship between Scotland and England and Wales, Northern Ireland, or we'll get on with that some other time. Um, and when you also have to start thinking about kind of the Scottish economy, really, in the, in the international context, that's something I've thought about a bit more, especially since the last referendum. So at the moment, I mean, if I, if I lived in Scotland, I'd probably be inclined to vote no in a referendum, just kind of because I feel like mm. I'm voting... Mm more for the status quo, as in the status quo being this whole kind of democratic system in Europe that we've built up over the last 50, 60 years. Mm. Let's kind of stick with that for now. Maybe in a generation's time we can reconsider that, but now probably isn't the moment. Yeah. Um, so that's my thoughts. Um, and that's probably, that's I probably think that's probably all we time. have time for. Yes. Did we, we shared opinions, we shared thoughts. Hopefully you like this. I implied breaks that would involve marches. <laughs> yeah. Fascism is right. Fascism is right. Happening, happening. If fascism happens, we'll, we'll tell you about it. We'll be the first people to tell you, we promise. Uh, we'll if you like what we're doing, <laughs> I think this is what you're supposed to say. If you like what like we're doing, like and subscribe. Like and, whatever they can like. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Yes, do that. Uh, and we'll see you again soon.